Welcome back to the Room One Popular Opinions, and today, hopefully, hopefully, I will get this done very quickly because there's not much of an update that I can actually give you because I've talked about everything. This is just a bit of a mid-year check-in for us to see how we're doing, and in my case, not doing good. So let's very quickly just talk about all the books that we've read in this half of the year. First thing is the best book you've read so far in 2024, and I actually have a very, very simple answer for this. There have been a couple of books that I've enjoyed this year, but this one takes the cake for this half of the year, so is this book. <laughs> the Grace of Wild Things by Heather Fawcett absolutely takes the cake, and it is absolutely the book that is going to be maybe my favorite book of the year, but certainly one of them in any case. So, ironically, because one of the most disappointing books is also by Heather Fawcett. However, I cared about this book so much, I read it as an ebook that I had to hunt it down. It's, by the way, very, very difficult to find because it's not that <laughs> popular or well known. So, on Amazon UK and on Wordery, I couldn't even get it because no one was selling it. So I had to go on German Amazon and I found this random store that was selling it secondhand for like 11 euros. <laughs> and I barely hunted this down, but I'm so happy that I have it because this is absolutely the best book that I've read in this half of the year. It's an Anne of Green Gables retelling through a witch story in the woods. Also, Heather Fawcett apparently writes all her books in autumn or winter, <laughs> which is just a funny observation, but this book was a delight start to finish. I always thought about it when I wasn't reading it, and when I did finish it, I actually didn't cry a single time during reading this book, but I cried when I finished it, because when I turned that last page, I realized that it was the last page, and I was genuinely so upset. That, that was it, that I'm done with this book, that I'm never going to read it for the first time again. And that's why I knew it had to be the best book that I've read so far this year. So it's absolutely this book. I have one minor complaint, which you can see if you go on my Goodreads. One minor complaint, but overall perfection. And I'm actually sort of depressed that she's just not retelling the rest of the series because I feel like it will be such a cool spin to see the rest of the story and how her and Gilbert's story progresses in this version where they're magical. So I didn't even have to think too hard about this one. It's definitely that book. The best book you've read so far this year. The best sequel. The best sequel, not the best book. I haven't read a lot of sequels this year. That's because I re rarely read series if it's not a reread, if that makes sense. Like I rarely read new series, so I very rarely get to read sequels. I suppose, though I hate to say it, it's gonna have to be Throne of Jade because even though, again, I don't like that series anymore, that was the best sequel that I read this year. <laughs> there weren't many, so unfortunately for me, I think that has to count. The next question is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Now, I don't anticipate releases like ever unless there's the very rare instance where I'm waiting for a manga to come out because I very rarely buy books that are new releases. So we're going to say Noragami Volume 27, which is supposed to come out in December. I'm very eagerly awaiting that. And... This one hasn't been announced, but I'm still waiting for it. <laughs> and that's the Bungo Light Novel 9, because it came out in Japan at the end of 2023. So I'm fingers crossed that I'm going to get the English translation in this year, but I doubt it. I think it's going to come out in 2025. I don't know where what the delay is with this one, because the last few books we've gotten like back to back, like every six months we've gotten the translations, but this one came out in December of 2023 in Japan and we still haven't got it. So I technically don't know if that's supposed to count because it's not announced yet. I have no books that I'm waiting for. So n none of that in this, <laughs> in this case. The next question is biggest disappointment. Now these two, I have many books that have been disappointments this year, but if we're looking at biggest, it's certainly going to be 
these two. <laughs> I'm just gonna like these two. Definitely. I'm gonna hold this one up first because both of these are loved by people in my house, by my parents, by people I know. In general, these books are very liked. This one is specifically, I don't think I've seen anyone talk shit about this book on the internet yet. Allow me to be the first. Bored out of my mind. Didn't even finish it. I think I didn't even get to page 400 and it's a brick. So I was so disappointed by how bored I was with it because, again, everyone I know and who I don't know on the internet loves this book. And <laughs> I, I hated it. I hated my experience reading it. There's one singular like sequence of events that I actually enjoyed reading. Everything else I was extremely bored by, like extremely the writing style, the history dumping, the characters, the slow development. I just hated my experience reading this book and I would never do it again. The first time I tried to read it, it was in the Wordsworth edition, so I was like pretending that it was because the font was unreadable. But then I got this beautiful Penguin edition, which is very readable, and it's a stunning copy of a book, but <sighs> I wouldn't say it's fair to say that I hated the story itself, because at its core, I love revenge stories, but I hated this story, <laughs> how it was written and why it's this long. Again, I know he wrote it like weekly or monthly in installments like that. So it was probably more palatable when you didn't have to read this much at once. And that's why it's this long probably because he didn't know when to stop, but I hated my time reading this. Let's not talk about it ever again. This one though, in particular, was one of my mother's favorite books when she was younger. Not necessarily book, but author, author. Is the first book that I read this year, super short, same problem, okay, same problem. A book that I hated is going to be highly ranked in my eyes than a book that I was bored by. That's why both of these are here, okay? This is 130 pages. I kept falling asleep. I kept falling asleep and just reading it and being like, when is this chapter going to end? <laughs> I fell asleep three times reading this didn't like any of the ideas presented or discussed or the way that they were presented or discussed. I didn't like any of the characters, but I don't think I was meant to because, as I said, this is a book of ideas, not necessarily a book of characters. Like, this is supposed to be taken not exactly literally. And I also hated my time reading this book. This was a lot shorter than Monte Cristo, so I finished it. However, the process of reading it was absolutely miserable. That's why both of these are humongous disappointments for me. New favorite author. Um, we're going back to the classics. I mentioned him in my last video. Nikolai Gogol. <laughs> Absolutely one of my new favorite authors. I mean, I liked him in high school, but I didn't know how much. I didn't know how much until I actually picked up all of his works. Okay. I find him hilarious, but also deep when you look past the hilarity. He's one of those authors that I laugh at but then realize how deep it actually is what he said so adore him he again isn't really a new author because i knew i liked him before but now i actually love him the next one is just going to be <laughs> the queen the icon shirley jackson because i adore that woman and don't necessarily think that everything she's ever written is five stars this collection in particular not everything in this collection is five stars because so many of her stories are pointless. It's like, wh why was this ever printed? However, her writing style is so digestible to me that it's a pleasure to read even when I am actually bored. Her writing style is something that's just very, very delightful to me and I love it. And the next one is necessarily an author. <laughs> However, it's Walt, Walt Whitman. He is now one of my favorite poets of all time. He used to be Robert Frost. I think he has now joined the ranks. But I love very random bits of poetry. I have like random poems that I like, not necessarily like a magnum opus of the author. However, this collection of like collected poems of Walt Whitman, I just flip through it sometimes and pick a random poem because it just resonates with me. And for reference, my dad read Walt Whitman because we were reading the little black classics together and he didn't get it like at all. Poetry is extremely subjective. So 
if you were to tell me, like, how could Walt Whitman be your favorite? I, I don't know what to tell you. The things that he says and the way he says them just resonate with me. I don't know how to articulate that. For example, a lot of people like Emily Dickinson. I also have like Emily Dickinson in these Wordsworth editions. I don't like Emily Dickinson. Her rhythm in the poetry, or rather the lack thereof, really bothers me. And there's like maybe a few poems by Emily Dickinson that I've ever liked. So poetry is extremely subjective. There's not much to say on that subject. New favorite character. Again, I'm not going to repeat myself. <laughs> yeah. But it's certainly, it's certainly going to be Louis Moore and the titular Shirley Kildar. It's going to be them, okay? Because, again, I'm not going to repeat myself from that video. It's long enough. But this was a book that I knew nothing about, nothing about going in. So, like, my expectations sort of formed as I was going along. And I did not expect a character to appear like three fifths of a book into it, and for me to absolutely fall head over heels for him. So, yeah, Louis and Shirley from here, definitely some of my favorite and best written characters of all time that I've read this year. There could be others, but I didn't want to count the characters from Grace of Wild Things because technically all those characters are from Anna Green Gables. So even though their characterization is a bit different, I feel like it was a bit <laughs> a bit cheating of me to pick them. So definitely these, absolutely these two. I freaking adore them. <sighs> a book that made you cry. Now this was a little difficult. This was actually a little difficult. Contrary to popular belief, because most of the vlogs that I do make are actually about books that I love. So obviously, if I'm going to cry, I'm going to cry at those. So like your perception may be a bit skewed. But I don't cry that often. <laughs> I don't cry that often to books. So what I was thinking about it, and I can't tell you, like, I can't tell you if I cry to a book this year, that wasn't a reread. Like again, I cried at the end of this, but not at the book itself. So I had a bit of difficulty thinking, not so much Book of Friends. Every time I read that, I'm close to tears. But again, I don't think that that counts. Like a book that I just read and actually cried my eyes at, I don't think there's been a single one this year. It hasn't been like a random spur of the moment reread. So yeah, if we end 2024 without me bawling my eyes out at a book, that will be disappointing, actually. It's not that I like doing it. It's that I enjoy a book managing to get that reaction out of me. So I would like it. I would like it because all I do is just weep at rereads and the rereads usually make me cry a lot harder than before because I see things that I didn't see the first time around. I am, <laughs> that, that was not the question. A lot of these questions, like a book that made you happy, a lot of these questions sort of, go hand in hand, which I don't think is that well done, but <laughs> both of these books made me extremely happy, extremely happy. So I guess, again, I have to repeat myself. Like, this is my favorite book that I've read so far this year. Obviously, it made me happy. So I don't love the questions. The main Made You Cry one is like a bit different, but a book that made you happy, obviously, it's one of the books that you actually loved that year. So Let's see what else we have. It's most beautiful book. It's absolutely the illustrated Wind in the Willows. That's why I got it. <laughs> it's absolutely the most beautiful book that I've read this year. And the last question is, what else do you have to read by the end of 2024? I don't make DBRs. However, there are a few things that I have to read. I want to finish this collection because I've already started it. So I kind of want to finish it. I need to finish this stupid series even though I don't want to, but I bought the entire series, which I never do, so I'm going to have to finish it. And what else do we have? I'm going to have to finish Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, which also bored out of my mind. If I hadn't watched the series and I just like read the book not knowing anything about the characters, I would never finish this. But since I've watched the series and I loved the series and I actually really liked the characters in the series, I'm sort of pushing myself to slog through. But 
without the series, I never, I would never finish this book. And this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it, but I would like to actually read it this summer because I kind of promised my mother this was also one of her favorite books from when she was young. <laughs> and that's The Name of the Rose by Echo. We'll see. Am I in the mood for a heavy historical book? After Monte Cristo and Pillars of the Earth? Not really. Not really. However, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it because apparently this year all I do is read people that are books that are other people's favorites. <laughs> so I might as well. I already took the L with Hesse and Dumas. So I guess we could do it. But this is also a really thick book. And the font is teeny tiny. And it's religious. I don't know. I don't know. However, I'm going to do my best. So this is like a tentative, a tentative attempt at something I should read by the end of the year. That is sort of it, actually. I feel like this was anticlimactic, but at the same time, that's because I don't want to talk about all the books that I already talked shit about for months this year. Because if you asked me what books I read this year, I feel like all the horrible ones would come to mind first because there were so many. And because I've been reading the Little Black Classics and the Little Modern Classics, which is like 130 small books, I feel like my mind is just full of so many different authors and so many different like short works of fiction that I wouldn't really know how to organize it in my mind. Like it, nothing sticks out that much, which speaking of, I'm gonna make like a proper review video for those two box sets. I'm gonna like compare the scores that both me and my dad gave the books and like give you the books that we do actually recommend from those two box sets. Spoiler, it's not a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot. There's a reason why the box set is so cheap. But again, if you were to ask me stuff that sticks out, I feel like this this would be the only thing that I could confidently tell you. Like, yes, I loved reading this in the last six months and surely by Charlotte Bronte. I feel like everything else is kind of like flown under the radar and gotten stuck or buried in the bogs of crap. <laughs> so yes, I hope you've had a better half of your reading year. But j again, just so we're fair, my reading drastically picks up like September to December. I feel like I read way more in that stretch of time than I do in January through June, July, because I don't read during the summer. And that is already starting. <laughs> that is already starting because I'm already in my seasonal reading slump. I just find that I cannot focus on the words under a warm light in the warm weather. It's just not for me. So read this book. Okay, read this book because it deserves so much love than Emily Wilde and they came out at the same time, whereas this has like 2000 reviews on Goodreads. So read this if you like Anna Green Gables and if you like The Witch Cottage in the Woods and a way better romance between Faye and Human. So that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I will make something way less awkward because I just keep looking at the questions and not knowing what to say. I'm going to make a better video pretty soon because I'm wrapping up everything that I need to do for university and let me know what you read in the first half of the year so we can either lament or be very happy together. Depends. Probably lament if we're talking about me. So I will see you in the next video.